Hi, my name is Alessandro Grimaldi and I'm a VBA developer since 1999. This presentation aims to introduce VBA to those who never heard about it, to those who heard about it but are not sure about what it does, to those who know it but are unsure about what it can do for them, and to those who think that VBA is not good enough, VBA is not powerful enough. To start, I will very quickly introduce VBA, just very few bullet points about its pros and cons, a very high level and limited overview. Then I'll show you two applications I developed a few years ago when I was consulting for the United Nations to demonstrate access capabilities when it comes to graphical interfaces, because yes, access can be used to produce graphical interactive interfaces. I will show you two video clips though not the actual applications because that would take too long. Finally, I will show you one more access application, a real life application, a good example of how complex a VBA application can be. From my point of view, the main purpose of this presentation is to re-establish or <laughs> establish the honor and the reputation of one of the most underrated, under-evaluated programming language ever. My perception is that there is some degree of misinformation and misconception about this fantastic programming language. Almost everybody knows that VBA is the programming language behind the Microsoft Office applications. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Access, to name the most used, but not many people are aware of its potential, and this happens for several reasons. The Office applications are powerful enough by themselves. Their interfaces offer so many features and so many functionalities that normal users are more than happy with them and they don't even feel the need for additional code. They know very well that they use maybe 50% or even less of the available functionalities. They probably don't even know what the remaining 50% does and they're happy with that. VBA itself is very easy to learn, at least at the basic level, and for some reason easy is often considered another word for not good or too simple. Also, it cannot be considered a real object-oriented language, which is the mainstream approach to today's programming, because it doesn't implement the full concept of object. And this is the most technical sentence you will hear in this presentation. The programming environment itself is old and doesn't provide much help to the developer as compared to more modern programming environments, which automatically create code structures, suggest the correct syntax, highlight errors, uh, automatically link external libraries, and so on. So does it have any positives? Well, it's cheap. It's already included in Microsoft Office. Other languages and frameworks like .NET, require a separate tool such as Visual Studio and therefore a purchase procedure and a license and then additional costs for more licenses, support and so on. Writing code is easy and fast and code maintenance is also easier if compared to other languages. This is great in the initial phase of a project to create a proof of concept or a prototype. But also during a project's lifetime, it's good to have the possibility to make quick changes and to add more functionalities in a very short time. The whole application is usually embedded in one single file, so normally its distribution to users or its migration to another drive are not big issues. And even though Office applications are powerful by themselves, VBA can exponentially boost their power, and I hope I'll be able to show you what I mean in a few minutes. So given the fact that the provided interface is so powerful, what's the point of VBA? Well, there are at least two main areas of interest. Extend and expand the power of a single office application. Not everything is possible through the interface alone, especially if you need one application to talk to another application. In fact, VBA can enable the communication between office applications, and that's the most powerful feature that VBA offers. Some examples. Excel and Access. Data can be extracted from an Excel file and stored into an Access database. Vice versa, data contained in an Access database can be used to populate an Excel sheet. Word and PowerPoint, selected text and images in Word, can be exported to PowerPoint to automatically create a presentation. Vice versa, text and images in a PowerPoint presentation 
can be imported in Word to transform that presentation in a written document. Access can scan the Outlook folders performing actions on the emails, but there is no limit to the interactions. For example, you can create a mail survey. Access creates and sends emails through Outlook with the survey questions, then starts monitoring the inbox waiting for the incoming replies, extracts the answers from these reply emails as they arrive, and stores them in a database. It can also send them to an Excel file to feed charts, formulas, statistics, pivot tables, and or to a PowerPoint presentation showing the results, maybe after an aggregation of the data. You may also want to receive a daily mail with these documents attached and the summary of the daily figures. All these operations can be carried on automatically with just a few clicks by the user. These are only some basic examples of what VBA can do. Imagination is the limit. But there is one Office application whose cause I would like to plead. His Majesty King Access, which is by far the most unjustly despised and under-evaluated Office application. It's often considered a toy database manager, only able to handle a few hundred records. And yes, you can create some macros, but they are difficult to write. There's not even a macro recorder like in Excel. They are not flexible enough, not powerful enough, and that's it. Well, I've been working with Access for more than 20 years now, and I can tell you that there are things you can do with Access that you probably have never known about and have never seen. For example, do you know you can have up to two gigabytes databases, which can mean millions of records? If two gigabytes are not enough, you can split the database in multiple chunks to bypass this limitation, and the code can switch from one to another. Think, for example, to historical data with one database per year. You can have concurrent users accessing the same database up to 10, 15, and even more in some cases. If you need more users, you can connect an access interface to any of the most used database platforms, for example, MySQL, SQL Server, or Oracle. In other words, you can have an Oracle database with all the features of an Oracle database in terms of security, login, performance, capacity, and so on, with an access interface, easy and quick and cheap to develop and maintain. The objection here is always, yes, but access interfaces are limited and boring. And this is because talking about access, you are probably used to see something like this, an endless list of records, or this, or this ugly, very old school interface, or this, if you are lucky, at least this is neat and colored. But I agree, these are flat and boring and not even quite useful when you have big amount of data. Relations among records are not clear, and often it's not even easy to navigate without getting lost or losing sight of the big picture. But this is not a VBA or an access limitation. This is limited time or limited budget or developers' limited creativity. Because with a little time and some fantasy, you can have something like this. This is an access application, a normal access file. What you see here is a standard access form, but instead of showing an endless list of records or text boxes and buttons, it is used as a canvas to draw a point. Of course, there is some VBA behind this form, about 3,500 lines. This was actually just a proof of concept, so the graphic is not particularly sophisticated, but this is an example of what I call a dynamic interface. That's to say a graphical interactive environment where you have objects on the screen you can interact with. You can grab them with a mouse and drag and drop and move from side to side and connect with lines and so on. It's colorful, it's visual, uh, I can tell you it's fun to use, and to be honest it doesn't look so boring to me. Not only that, it's also possible to create something more structured like this. The need here was to organize the arrival of ships loaded with food to the main three ports in Ethiopia, uh, Djibouti, Berbera, and uh, Port Sudan. Each port had its own docking cost, and every ship had a daily cost, mainly due to two factors. The days needed for waiting at the berth when the berth was occupied by another ship, 
and the days needed to actually unload its food. So the goal here was obviously to minimize the overall cost for all the ship operations during the year, or better, during a user-defined period of time, and at the same time keeping memory of what was done and when. The scrollable timeline effectively fulfills these tasks as it allows the user to scroll back and forth by day, by week, by month, or even by quarter. Before this, the whole calculations were made on a huge Excel sheet, and I can tell you that was a real nightmare to use, and even worse to maintain, and uh, sometimes it wasn't easy to understand either. Access, with about 3,000 lines of VBA, could provide a graphical, user-friendly, and easy-to-use solution, which also has the advantage of showing a large amount of information embedded on one single screen. Here, on the single form, for example, you have information about the dates of each ship arrival, days of waiting, days needed to unload the food, date of leaving, information on the ship itself, name and total load, statistics on the waiting time, and the total cost per berth. Different solutions can be explored simply dragging the ships around, changing the dates of arrival, or even changing port to find the cheapest combination. As you can see, a ship is automatically resized to keep in count the presence of other ships at the same berth at the same time. If you find a solution you like, you can use the simulation mode to somehow freeze it and compare it with other solutions without losing it. This is the cost of the current solution, which you deem is good, and now you can play around with the ships, changing dates, berths and ports, and see how the total cost changes, increasing or decreasing, until you either find a more satisfying solution or decide the original one was the best. At the end, you can choose to discard the simulation and keep the original solution or vice versa. And of course, the chosen configuration can be saved in the underlying database. Everything is basically on one single screen. Both of the applications we saw are actual planning tools or decision-making supporting tools encompassing logistics and finance and budgeting and organizational problems. This kind of application is very cheap to create, very fun to use, easy to use, with a more or less flat learning curve, with no need for expensive and tedious staff training sessions especially useful in case of staff replacements and rotation. So yes, this is boring, I, I totally agree. It's also boring to make from a developer's point of view. Now you might say, okay, that was nice and dealing with food and ships sure is a respectable job, but hasn't much to do with what we do in our business. You would be right. So I would like to show you one of the several tools I created I chose this one, but I have to say the choice was hard because there are definitely many tools I really liked and any of them would be a very good example of VBA capabilities. A short background may be useful here. The task that SPLS had to perform was to read the hundreds of incoming Excel files, check the data and import it into the database. We are talking about for a total of several hundreds of thousands data points. The system was based on a number of loaders, which were small access files sitting on virtual machines whose only task was to chew and spit. That's to say, they were assigned a number of Excel files and they had to extract the data, run checks, statistics and calculations, and then save the results in an Oracle database. All these loaders were coordinated and managed by a master, another access file. The master had access to all the and was responsible for distributing these files to the loaders, keeping their workloads balanced so that no loader was ever overwhelmed nor idle. The system was scalable, in fact you could have any number of loaders. You could also add more loaders during the exercise. The master would immediately recognize them and put them to work. Each loader periodically generated a report on its status and activity. The master collected all these reports, added its own status and activity report, and made this information available to the third layer of the system, the controller, another access file, 
that could be copied to any computer showing the user's information about the status and the progress of the process. It was also highly resilient. If a loader stopped working for any reason, for example a machine failure, the master could take its files back and redistribute them to the active loaders. If the master itself stopped working, that wasn't a problem either, because there were two more instances of the master silently running in the background. As soon as the first failed, one of the other two would automatically take over and continue the process from the point where it was left. This is a screenshot of the controller's main screen. On the right side you could see the status and other information about every single file being processed, assigned, rejected, ongoing and so on. You could also prioritize some files so that they would be put on the top of their loader's queue and processed before the others. But you could also kill a file, freeze it, suspend it and so on. Double clicking on a file you could see a detailed log of its processing from the moment it was assigned to the loader up to the completion. You also had a graphical timeline showing the main steps, time and result of the process at a glance. Plus a cross-reference to the other files. By clicking on one of them you would see its details. But the real added value to this tool was the map on the left side of the controller screen. It shows the status of the network connections and of each component. In this example, which is not a dummy image but an actual screenshot taken during the tests, we see that loaders 1 to 5 are active and working. The small numbers here are the size of their working queues. Loader 6 is not responding for some reason, maybe the virtual machine is frozen or down, so its queue has been emptied by the master and the files redistributed to the active loaders. Loader 7 is grey because its status is unknown and that's because there is a network problem. The master can't communicate with the loader so some action has to be taken by the system admin. This map was continuously refreshed so that any problem would be flagged within two minutes. It was also interactive so clicking on the loader an admin could force it to quit, to go idle, to freeze, to deactivate itself and the same for the master. A relevant amount of work was also dedicated to the logging and auditing system. For example, users had full access to any loader's log with a detail of all of their activities. Same with the three masters, and admins could also force the activation of one of the backup masters for any reason, network problems, performance issues or whatever. Last but not least, a complete downtime log for each loader and for each master was also available which is something very useful to have for auditing purposes, network statistics, uh, problem fixing, aftermath statistics and so on. Now that really was a lot of work in terms of both design and development. These are the two crazy guys who made it. Uh, we had to design efficient algorithms, we had to define and set up a proper network structure and formalisms to describe all the actions, states, the state transitions, the information flow, the communication among the modules and so on. What is shown here is just a part of the documentation we generated and the functionalities we developed. The reason why I'm telling you all this is not to brag or to show off, but to draw your attention on the fact that this was a huge corporate level project. Yet VBA was enough to deliver a proper solution, an efficient, effective, totally scalable, highly resilient and extremely economic solution. There's no Python here, there's no Java, no .NET or C-Sharp, just two crazy guys and 12,000 lines of properly exploited VBA. And in the end it took about four or five months, so it was also relatively quick. Well, we're done. I hope I gave you at least some food for thought. VBA and especially Access when properly mastered is a powerful tool, more powerful than you probably think or used to think until now hopefully. Office automation, decision support, planning support, even data visualization, for sure it's not the poor and limited scripting language that many people think it is. So next time someone tells you that VBA is not powerful enough for your needs, well think twice. They might be right, but there's a high probability that they just don't know VBA well enough. And 99% of times, if you're dealing with Office, for example, Excel Files, an extremely common case, or Outlook, another common case, 
then VBA is the solution, no matter how big your project is. Thanks for watching.